Sometimes even when you have a top of the line dust collector, you still end up with dust all over the place. That's when you need air filtration. The more powerful, the better. I designed this unit about three years ago and I'm still using it to pull the dust out of the air in my shop. It works really well and over the last few years, thousands of people have downloaded the plans for this design. In an effort to make this kind of DIY air filtration more accessible to people that don't have the tools or the time to make one, I spent the last few months refining this design into a pre-made kit that is relatively easy to assemble. This is the most powerful option in the current lineup. If you don't need quite this much power or you want something even easier to build, I have the Model B and Model C kits as well. These work with just about all box fans and only need a screwdriver to assemble. The Model A works with a drum fan capable of filtering 1,450 cubic feet of air per minute. That's enough power to filter the air in a two-car garage in only three minutes, or 20 air changes per hour. I will talk about even more performance information in an upcoming video. This design uses eight 16 by 20 by 1 inch filters from any manufacturer. What you will need to assemble one of these is a screwdriver, a scissors, and a drill. The kit arrives with a big pack of parts. You will get three rolls of foam tape, a cover for the power cord, a filter clip wrench, fan mounting hardware, 32 air filter clips, casters, screws, and even more screws. Now for the CNC cut wood. For the top side, there is a space cut for the air filter wrench and the cord cover. The bottom has pre-drilled holes for mounting the wheels. There are four legs ready to go with all the pre-drilled holes and spaces cut for these horizontal braces. There are four different types of these, all machined to fit together perfectly. In this video, I'll show you where and how to install them. The first two of these units will be $75 off retail price on my Etsy page. Part of the reason for that is that the first production run had some cosmetic issues that don't affect performance, but they are lower quality than I prefer. These issues have been fixed, and all future orders will be made with a higher quality plywood. The first step in assembly is installing the casters. 16 screws are supplied for this. They can be screwed in by hand, but it does go a lot faster with a drill. Now working from a table or on the floor, you will want to arrange the top, bottom, and four legs. The direction of the leg is important. On one side of the leg, there will be some small visible nail heads. These will point to the inside of the box. If the outside corner of the leg is open like you see here, the leg needs to be flipped over. The outer corner of the leg should be in line with the corner of the top, like this. Now take a bolt and a washer and thread them through the top board into the leg. Tighten the screw fully. When you move the assembly, be sure to support the freestanding leg until the outer frame is complete. Now screw the second leg onto the top board. Then screw the bottom board onto the two legs. Tighten the screws fully. Now the third leg can be attached. Again, the side with the nail heads points towards the inside. Support the leg until both screws are installed. As you may have noticed, I attached the top in the wrong direction. Be sure to orient it so that the cutout for the wrench points away from the legs, like this. The last leg gets screwed onto the top and bottom, and this completes the outer frame. Set the unit upright for the next steps. Now we install the first horizontal brace, starting with the 2 inch thick one with the rounded corners. We use a 3 quarter inch screw for this side of the device. Using a Phillips screwdriver, insert the screw. Do not fully tighten the screws on the horizontal braces until all 12 of them have been installed. Now for the top side, align the rounded corner of the brace with the rounded corner on the leg. The notched edge of the part faces inward. You may need to loosen these screws on the top side of the unit if the brace does not drop in smoothly. The bottom brace is identical to the one we just installed, just flipped upside down. Now using the 1 inch screws included in the kit, we will install the horizontal brace on the short side of the device. These have a rounded edge that faces inwards. Again, do not completely tighten the screw. The center brace has two rounded edges.
Installation on the top side is the same as the bottom side. Now install the rest of the braces on the next two sides and then tighten screws on all of the horizontal members. Do not over tighten them or they may strip. If you loosened the top and bottom side during this process, tighten those down too. Now we install the foam tape. I had originally planned to just send three uncut rolls, but cutting it to the perfect length is a bit tricky. So I will send pre-cut strips with this kit instead. Technically, you won't need a scissors for the assembly now. The foam tape is there to create a perfect seal between the air filter and the filter box. You will get two lengths of tape. The long side is mounted vertically. Peel off the backer and align it with the edge of the opening. Try not to pull too hard on the foam strip as you are sticking it to the surface. This can cause the strip to become elongated. You want to overlap the top and bottom side of the opening by about 3 eighths of an inch. Now apply the short section of foam to the top side of the opening. Pull about 2 inches of the paper backer away from the foam strip and push the end up against the vertical strip so that there is no gap in between them. Tack the first few inches down. Peel away the paper backer, and then stick down the remainder of the strip. Repeat this step for all the openings. This is what it should look like when you're done. Sorry there is no sound to go along with this video, it was too loud in the shop to capture good audio. Now we'll use this hardware to install the fan. There are two options for the fan itself. The first is a Max Air drum fan. This one works great if you intend on blowing air up and out of the box. This is the most common method for any air filtration device. This particular fan is not an ideal option for blowing into the filter box because the motor is not enclosed and dust can get inside of it. A quick side note on these configurations. If you want the most efficient way to filter the ambient air in your space, point the fan upwards. This option will effectively clean the air far away from the filter. However, if you want to cut down on dust emitted from a specific source, point the fan downward into the box. This may seem irregular, but it works incredibly well at capturing airborne dust from up to about 5 feet away. It essentially works like a vacuum for the air. I personally use this method for cleaning parts, rags, filtering vapors, and I have even used it as a makeshift spray booth. For this particular configuration, the second fan option is, in my opinion, the only option because it has an enclosed motor. This prevents dust from accumulating inside of the motor. As you can see, the fan will get dirty if used in this way and it should be cleaned regularly. The Caterpillar drum fan is capable of being used to push air into the filter or pull air out of it. Be sure to center the fan on the filter box prior to installation. To mount the fan in the push direction, use these four 3D printed brackets. Drive the screw into the surface of the wood or pre-drill the hole with a 1 16th inch drill bit. Now to mount the fan in the pull configuration, you will feed the cord through the hole and center the fan. The fan can be mounted with three of these brackets. If you are going to mount the filter on a wall or the ceiling or any other non-standard application, you will want a strong connection between the fan and the filter box. Be sure to screw these in at these locations. If you mount them at the top of the curve, the screw may pass through the top into the filter area. You do not want that. The other option is my personal preference. Use one of these brackets at the corner location. Then we'll install a thumb lock on the other side. This will allow the fan to be easily removed. First, the bracket goes on using the 1 inch screws provided in the kit. Apply moderate downward force perpendicular to the surface using your drill until the screw bores into the wood. Leave the screw about one half turn loose. Repeat this operation for the second screw. Now, on the other side, take the thumb lock, place it in exactly this location, and drive in the 2 inch screw. This is what it should look like when you're done. If it is too hard to turn, loosen the screw until it turns with moderate resistance. Now you can unlock the fan, lift it up, and turn the dial. The power cord cover has two modes. If you are using the push configuration, install it like this. If you have the fan in the pull configuration, you will need to remove this key from the cover. Now run the plug through the opening. 
Slide the cord into the slot and insert the screw. Leave some slack on the power cord inside the box and thread the wing nut onto the screw. The last items to install are the filter clips. I spent some time updating the original design for this launch. They are now less likely to crack if you overdrive the screw, they are more flexible than before, and they have rounded edges which slide more smoothly over the sides of the air filters. The holes for these are pre-drilled. There are eight on each side of the filter box. Screw them in using your drill. Try not to over tighten them. You should be able to turn them with moderate force. Now you can install the filters. There is an arrow printed on the side of every filter. This indicates the direction of airflow through the filter. If the fan is pointed up, the arrows should point into the box. If the fan is pointed down, the arrows should be pointed outward. Turning the filter clips is easy with the provided filter clip wrench. All brands of air filters should fit perfectly. Shown here are 3M MERV 13s and Nordapure MERV 14s. If you ever encounter a filter that does not quite fit right, please let me know in the comments. When you're done, you can stash the wrench in the cutout on the top of the box. Now you can crank up the fan and start making dust. I really like the way that the CNC version of this came together. It's a solid design, but if you want it to be even more solid, say if you want to take this filter to job sites, I recommend applying wood glue to all of the joints. You can buy this air filter kit on my Etsy page. If you have the tools and want to build it yourself, the plans are free on my website. They always have been and always will be. But if you want to upgrade that build, you can buy this pack of 3D printed parts or select a few of your choosing. Links are in the description. Another nice feature of this design is that the fan legs can be used as a convenient push handle. Big thanks to Rodney and Soulcraft for helping me build the prototypes. If you are in the St. Louis area and want to learn woodworking, check out his shop. I am hoping to get the video on the Model A, B, and C performance numbers out sometime soon, but at this point the script is 5,000 words long and those videos always take a while to cut together. If you have any specific questions, let me know in the comments. Many thanks to my patrons on Patreon. If you want to support the channel, that's a great way to do it. Thanks for watching.